Okay. Uh, good morning. So, so this uh, the computational part of uh, whatever we talked last uh, time. I will do it uh, Monday. Today I will talk about chapter eleven of my own book, a little bit more theory, and I will skip proofs because. Uh, because uh, the main idea is to go directly to the Fermat variety and to do computations there. So we have just learned some facts and to be able to use these facts. Anyway, uh, let me remember when we have a PN plus one, then and we have the hub hypersurface F equal to zero. What Griffiths did, uh, Griffiths was uh, star started to study that the Dirac homology of x equal to zero, looking for the complement. This complement, and for this he even didn't need a hyper homology. I mean, uh, just classical global differential forms were enough. And after taking residue, he was able to capture the Hodge filtration of the x itself. And uh, what I did in uh, my book. Uh, and this has to do with historical aspects of Hodge theory and also works in singularity theory. I took a, some projective space Pn inside Pn plus one, such that this uh, intersection was transversal. And then I write, uh, I wrote, uh, I looked for this uh, affine part. So f uh, f x zero equal to one. The other variables I called it f, and this f became a kind of team polynomial, translating the fact that uh, this hyperterplace and p and they intersect transversally. So the idea was that we, we are looking for this. And last uh, time I talked about Briscorn modules, which are uh, finer versions of the Dirac homology of f equal to zero. Uh, today I will talk about even uh, more uh, modules. At the end of the day, our complex number, they are the same as the Ram homology. But when you are one works with uh, with uh, with uh, rings, uh, then uh, they are something finer than the Ram homology. So let's say uh, call it in singularity theory. The, the 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 thing that I am going to introduce is it's called Gauss-Mannin system. Actually. At some point, I will talk about Gauss-Mannin connection, which is a more uh, usual term. But what's Gauss-Mannin connected? But system, it is just again uh, some uh, some a finer version of their own homology in our context. So maybe let, let's say. So the point is that what we 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 did, we we wanted to. to We were working it uh, with this uh, uh, differential forms. At the end, uh, these are uh, uh, <coughs> these are uh, differential forms in uh, differential forms in C n plus one minus f equal to zero. And basically, we are talking about uh, uh, the Dirac homology of this one, but let's uh, go to our uh, finer version using a ring. So maybe I define it. So I want differential forms. Remember this this notation. Anyway, this these are differential forms in C plus one. If you don't want to uh, bother yourself with uh, too much algebra, and then uh, I will add poles. How uh, long? Also, this means that I will take polynomials uh, with coefficients which are differential forms, and uh, of course, uh, 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 one over f to the k, and so on. And uh, what else? So then, uh, then uh, if I want to work with the Dirac the homology, then I have to. Uh, divided by exact forms, exponent, 
and actually this is the this is the the ROM homology of this guy but in some sense i am not interested in uh, uh, i am not interested in differential forms uh, i'm just only interested in differential form which has poles along f such that i can take a residue and get differential form for f equal to zero itself so uh, for this reason uh, i will uh, we will make this quotient that the, the holomorphic differential for along f equals zero for me they are also zero anyway uh differential n plus one form with poles along f uh, exact ones are zero and also holomorphic along f equal to zero they are also uh, zero okay so this is uh, this is the this is the module that uh, i'm i i need it and uh, the reason why we we need this this module instead of brisk or module is that uh, the, remember that when i was translated the hodge filtration and the griffiths theorem to the affine chart at the end i have differential mode with poles along uh, along f equal to zero okay so let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, see what is uh, going on uh, okay there are many statements going on <clears throat> maybe let's so oh, at the end of the we, we must be able to pl uh, to play with these differential forms maybe one thing so for example two equalities that i wrote it uh, it will be it, it they are used so for example uh, d omega over f i minus one is the same as i minus one the f wedge omega over f i this is in m and this is because uh, this is uh, the the difference is uh, uh, this my this one is the differential of omega divided by f i minus one and this is zero in the, our module and another things for example is uh, for, for example this 11 2 uh, the f which the omega is equal to f i this is equal to d the f which omega f i then this is this is zero anyway uh, let me let me go to the main point that i want to uh, i want to say uh, that is just a proposition 11.2 okay uh, <clears throat> and with this proposition 11.2 it will be clear that uh, this is also again uh, just uh, uh, the usual theorem homology. So remember that uh, this uh, H double prime Briscoe module. So we have embedding of this one here. It is just given by omega going to omega. Uh, okay maybe before before uh, before going to this one i have to tell uh, the, the the pole filtration so you see that uh, uh here in m we have a filtration coming from the pole order so let's say m1 m2 m k and so on so by definition what is mi mi is uh, the elements omega f f let's say s such that uh, at the end uh, s less than uh, less than i so mi contains uh, elements of the gaussian system which are represented by some differential form which has a pole order uh, less than or equal to i so this is a pole order filtration here order filtration and later we will see that this is actually well by Griffiths theorem we will see that it is related to Hodge filtration and okay so the proposition element two is that uh, this 
I will not write brackets. Usually when I write bracket, it means that the, the, the equivalence class. But uh, let's see. So basically we have bracket here, bracket here, everywhere bracket. And, and so, so maybe let's say if, so let's put it, if discriminant of f equal to no, no, not equal to zero. So in our complex content, this means that f equals zero is smooth. So if the discriminant is smooth, then we have this, uh, this, uh, this uh, mi, mi minus one is isomorphic to this uh, tissue. Uh, maybe I am something, I know I will tell it, is uh, this one. And then, uh, let's, no, no, in fact, the other way. This is isomorphic to quotient of mi by mi minus one, omega going to omega fi. And uh, so, so the proposition, if the discriminant is zero, first of all, these maps are well defined because at the end, uh, this is a quotient, this is a quotient, and remember that wf was, uh, which quotient? It was omega n plus one differential forms in uh, let's say c n plus one, and then there was d f which omega n, and then a multiple of f. Okay, so. So first of all, uh, well, these maps are well defined. Uh, they, this, for this one, actually, we don't need discriminant equal to zero. But uh, once the discriminant is uh, not zero, we can uh, prove that this is uh, this is an embedding, and uh, and actually, in this case, uh, let, let, let let me let me say, m one maybe one one part of the m one divided by the image is also again. Uh, this uh, WF. So maybe maybe I make a summary of uh, since I will not uh, prove this purely algebraic statement. So let's uh, let's make a summary. H print. I, I in the last lecture I told that this is the uh, embedded here uh, by what omega going to DF wedge omega this is embedding in m1 what is omega going to omega fi again uh, the equivalence class this is m1 and then there they have m1 inside m2 m2 inside m3 blah 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 blah, blah. and actually uh, and it turns out that if uh, we name this one for example by m0 and let's call this one m minus one then, uh, then uh, mi, mi minus one. These are uh, these are all uh, w, w. Anyway, these are uh, purely algebraic statement, and maybe the most important things for us uh, by the the definition of uh, this tree and delta f is a zero divisor of the whole wf and <clears throat> and so what this means what this means if over my base ring is uh, uh, is uh, is complex number or if Delta F is invertible to both. Oops. It is uh, just a moment. Uh, 
or if there's an invertible in the ring R, then, uh, then, uh, then, uh, I mean, <coughs> uh, then, uh, then uh, this means that WF is zero, and uh, because, uh, and the what turns out that this H print is the same as H second is the same as M1, blah, blah, blah in the same as mi and all of these things are just the, uh, this just the hn the ram of f equal to zero and remember that just this h prime was given in terms of differential n form the rest these things are uh, given by n different uh, uh, n plus one uh, differential forms but uh, they will serve as uh, they will uh, they will use them um, to analyze the Durham homology of f equal to zero. Okay, so what else? So as I said, this uh, this is a statement that I am mentioning but not uh, proving. These are purely algebraic. And today we will reach one part, uh, some part of the course that at, at the end. Uh, uh, that part we will keep in mind and we will go to the frame of our right. Okay. Okay, so uh, so in in some sense you see that the Durham homology of f equal to zero, we can uh, we can uh, uh, study it in with some finer object, uh, which is a Britzkorn module and the Goldman and system. Okay, so uh, let's go to the um let's go to the um, uh, uh let me let me take this again this f equal to zero this is actually g equal to zero remember that g was the last homogeneous piece of f equal to zero okay <laughs> at the end then maybe let's say my differential forms is here. So, uh, first of all, uh, this differential form that we are dealing with, it has poles here along f equal to zero, and uh, it has it can it can have pole also at the infinity in this uh, p n p n at infinity, and. Uh, maybe one uh, one uh, maybe one uh, uh, one aspect. Uh, let me say. Uh, okay, maybe before uh, before uh, going to define the weight filtration and height filtration here, I just. Uh, uh, state uh, one proposition. If it's eleven three, so uh, el any element of M can be written as an uh, as an or linear sum and as an or linear sum of uh okay omega I mean, well hi maybe just uh, I mean, right right directly x beta dx fk and uh, uh, remember that we took a basis of the, the of the Milner vector space B eta in I uh, beta less than K. Uh, <coughs> just a moment. Uh, degree, degree. Uh, okay. Anyway, this um, and remember that this A beta was just beta I. 
uh, divided by t i equal to 1 until n plus 1 and uh, x beta x1 beta x2 beta x n plus 1 um, okay um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, let me see there is a this typo here no okay so the point is that uh, at the end of the day what uh, what i am as uh, what is uh, what is here the degree of this guy uh, this a beta less than k this means the degree of this guy can be always less than the degree of uh, of uh, of this guy and so uh, a beta is strictly less than k there is a i have to distinguish two cases a beta strictly less than k a beta this uh this so maybe i will notation this uh, this this part i will call it omega beta the the they the, the, or, or maybe maybe I need another page. Okay. Maybe again, one more simple proposition. Well, actually, the first part of the proposition is very simple. Omega beta f k with i beta less than uh, k is holomorphic at infinity what this means it gives us it gives us a differential uh, n plus one form with poles only along f equal to zero so the point is that they will it will not give a uh, pole along this pn because it, uh, it, it it can happen and this is just uh, this is uh, ju this just follows from the projectivization of uh, of uh, of this guy and when you make the projectivization i mean in a minute uh, in a minute i will talk and omega beta ha let's say has a pole of order or one at infinity uh, and uh, and actually it has uh, it has residues uh, and uh, and so on so uh, this uh, this actually this part is uh, proposition uh, proposition 11.4 in uh, in my book but as i said this uh, this part is just uh projectivized it uh, just means that uh, you put uh, uh x1 x n uh, n plus one you uh, write it at x1 x0 blah blah, blah x n plus one x0 and uh, then uh, under uh, projectivization i i i, I, I f a k will uh, will be transformed into f a k and then uh, you will get up uh, maybe i will just power of x0 x uh, x0 the power of x0 will be basically k um, how it was uh, uh, <clears throat> the power of x0 here will be a, po a positive number Positive, and then uh, then uh, you will conclude that at x, x, x zero equals zero, it is uh, it is holomorphic, and so on. So anyway, um, again uh, some uh, some algebraic uh, manipulations. Um, <clears throat> let me return back what I wanted to say. So. So for this reason, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, 
uh, let me write this uh, w n uh, let's say generated by omega beta f k let's say i beta is strictly less than k and uh, this corresponds uh, to differential forms which uh, at the end uh, they do not have residue uh, uh, at infinity this will this is uh, this is uh, uh, called weight filtration. This is just one example of weight filtration, which uh, and hot filtration uh, invented by Delin. Uh, I mean, you can define it for uh, any variety, but we are just in a very specific example of uh, thin polynomials. Okay, <clears throat> and for for uh, for uh, for uh, our purpose, because we want to study the Hutch theory of the compact Piper surface. And then uh, we will need this one, but uh, of course, in our way, we, there, there will be a bit way equal to k also. And uh, let me see what what I want to tame more. And again, let's say the Hutch filtration. Okay. Prefaces theorem. So. Since we are interested on in the Hutch theory of the compact hypersurface, we will just need these differential forms. And since we need its uh, Hutch filtration, we will just need uh, this, uh, this Hutch filtration, this, this, this filtration. Fi, Fi, uh, Fi m, let's say, no, actually s. F, uh, uh, F I and what is this? Uh, this is just uh, generated by by which is omega beta omega beta F K uh, F K beta in I and uh, beta. So in the book, I have put, put less than or equal because uh, the idea was that uh, the affine variety itself has a uh, Hodge filtration, but uh, let's just uh, skip in, skip to the, uh, uh, and then, then minus I, okay. So uh, by Griffith's theorem, this is, uh, these are the filtration that we need. Remember that uh, by uh, when i beta is less than equal to k, this will giving uh, uh, the residue on f equal to zero. If they, they were giving uh, the Hodge filtration of uh, the hypersurface x. And I think uh, well for other purposes, it might be it might be interesting to involve uh, this the case i beta equal to k, and also uh, uh, arbitrary differential forms but uh, let's just uh, stay here okay so so I, I will need these uh, differential forms if this is strictly strict I bet is strictly less than K and I bet is strictly less than K and less the K is strictly less than n plus minus one minus I and using this one, I can uh, I I know the height filtration of the hypersurface and so on. So let me uh, before going to the case of homogeneous polynomial, let me let me say something. Okay, in one propose in one theorem, I I claim that these are free modules, and I gave the basis. It follows from a well-known fact from uh, algebra, if that you have two R modules, and uh, you uh, you have, uh, let's say, the, this one and this one. If this is free, and the quotient of this one is just a div uh, zero divisor, uh, uh, it has a zero divisor, something like this, the freeness of this one will imply this freeness of, uh, of this guy. So this means that then in our context, all these MIs are, are free, 
I will not use it, but anyway. Okay, so let's go to uh, homogeneous stain polynomial. Again, in my book, I have written uh, in a more general context, but let's go to our main example. Xn plus 1. And then F, my temple number will be G. Uh, well, at the end, I want uh, the Fermat variety, but for, for some reason, I will put some S parameters here. S, uh, well, if we're S equal to minus 1, then I will, uh, uh, I will get the, I will get the, uh, uh, the, uh, the compact uh, Fermat variety. So let's, uh, let's go forward. So G, I think this is called the uh, Euler's identity. Since G is homogeneous, degree of uh, D times G is the same as uh, X I uh, so you you you, uh, you could put also arbitrary homogeneous but let, let, uh, let's say homogeneous polynomial in x1 xn plus one and <clears throat> Okay, so this is uh, this is valid for arbitrary homogeneous. So uh, what what I want to do? I want to translate the Hodge filtration of uh, of uh, in this case to some uh, filtration in the and the Deram cohomology itself. The, 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 remember that uh, the Hodge filtration is given by a differential form which has pole along f equal to zero. I want to get rid of this uh, pole uh, f equal to zero. So maybe let's write this one uh, in a different format. So G, G, let's write this one. D, in this way, G is equal to dx, dg, which eta, so eta will be 1 over d, i equal to 1 until n plus 1 minus 1i xi the xi so this is just uh, rewriting this uh, this this guy here maybe this is uh, section 11 section 11.4 okay <clears throat> um hmm. Uh, let, 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 let me remember uh, then uh, remember this eta beta eta beta was just monomial x beta uh, this omega beta was uh, just uh, x beta dx and dx is the wedge product of all this 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 dx one of the good points of the this homogeneous case that when i mean the, my tame polynomial is the homogeneous minus plus constant and there is no other monomials and it will turn out that the computation of the Hodge filtration in this case because of this format it is uh, very easy so let's do so in order to capture the the Hodge filtration i i have this uh, omega beta let's say i know that this k is responsible for the uh Hodge filtration so let's let's try to let's try to to reduce it to some element in the Durham cohomology itself, uh, to reduce it to n form and not n plus one form. So I will multiply it with uh, one, uh, maybe let, let, let's write it this way. So the, I will just make it uh, one over s, s omega beta fk. And then I will, uh, uh, so I will use this. This is one over s minus f omega beta plus dg which eta beta 
So let's see. So what I have did, I have done, I have written S as F minus G. S of S, F minus G. Then F is, uh, uh, let me see, S equal to G minus F, sorry. So minus F omega beta is here. And then uh, there is uh, G omega beta. So G omega beta by this equality G omega beta is the same as dg wedge eta beta. So I have just uh, substituted. So uh, you, uh, so what happens that uh, first I get uh, one over s omega beta fk minus one. This is a kind of good news because I reduce the pole order because I want to reach to so let me let me explain here so under this inclusions under this inclusions i want to reach to here because this is uh, this contains really differential n forms that i can integrate over uh, over n cycles uh, so the idea of computation that i am doing it given element here uh, multiply it with delta f and then I will go back to the previous one, and that's it, go down, go down, until reaching here. And maybe, maybe, maybe it is an easy exercise. Discriminant of this guy, this guy is just minus s to the mu, the mu, the, the minimum number. And uh, in our context, Remember that in our context, mu in the Fermi, it is d minus 1 into n plus 1. Anyway, let's do the, the computation. Uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what I was, so the, the, uh, the g wedge eta beta. Now I will use this, uh, the identity that I wrote. Uh, remember that the beginning uh, modular exact forms, I wrote this uh, this 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 uh, this uh, identity d omega d f uh, omega f i d om is equal to this one. This was uh, uh, because we are in the uh, Gaussian system. So I will use this identity, and at the end it will be plus a beta a beta k minus uh, k minus one k minus one, then omega beta f k minus one, and and at the end it is one over s minus one plus a beta k minus 1 omega beta f k minus 1 so you see uh, this is actually the discriminant I, uh, well delta f i have just take the, the factor s once i am able to in, uh, invert s uh, from uh, mk of the gauss manis system i can go to mk minus 1 uh, and my element uh, here will be equivalent to this one, and I can I will repeat this one until uh, uh, let's say f. Let's do this one. Uh, let's do this one. So at, at the end I will get s k minus one minus one plus a bit uh, k minus one and minus one plus a beta. K minus two minus one plus a beta one and then omega beta f and this is uh, this is in m m m one uh, uh, let me see I have made a many oh sorry 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 sorry, sorry. I have made a mistake. Here when when I took this one actually this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, h is isomorphic 
and and so this is m0 and at the end uh, uh, m1 uh, is the same as uh, h uh, uh, h double prime let me see yeah Uh, oh no, just I just, just, uh, have to verify this one. Uh, yeah, just a moment, just a moment. Uh, oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. So this is, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, is, this is the wrong statement that I told here. This is uh, the statement, the statement is that this is isomorphic. And... Yeah, so uh, there is a one confusion. So this is actually the under uh, under this one. This is this is uh, this is isomorphic. So this will be at ten m zero. Okay. Anyway, we get uh, omega beta divided by f, and uh, and. And uh, then, well, we can go also to the classical differential n form, because uh, because uh, uh, what? Because if I fur further multiply with uh, some s, so then again, this uh, this these things here, s omega beta divided by f f. Then the same uh, the same things that I I did uh, here, this will be, this will be. Um, let me write it. Uh, <clears throat> exactly, uh, 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 like uh, uh, the same as uh, here. Then uh, there will be many. So there uh, there will be this f with f disappearing, and there will be dg. Then there will be dg wedge eta beta. But under the parameters are constant, so this will be actually d f wedge eta beta. Maybe I write it so it will be at the end. Ba 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 ba. Uh, d f wedge eta beta divided by f. Uh, okay. So uh, so uh, I will get this uh, this one. And uh, since h h prime is, is is given by let's say eta beta is equal to d f with eta beta, so this means that uh, at the end omega beta uh, uh, f k is identified with eta beta and this is the uh, my differential form uh, with eta beta up to some explicit constant and <clears throat> so under this inclusion that I wrote uh, this guy will be this way and this is a kind of good news because here I know what are the elements of the Hodge filtration, but in the Briscoe modern H prime, I don't know uh, which elements are uh, are part of the uh, Hodge filtration. But for homogeneous polynomials, I have uh, I have this. So you remember that in this case, a beta is less than k. So this means that the, my Hodge filter, this I have to keep this a beta less than k also here. I remember that n plus minus I and this. Anyway, uh, so uh -huh. before going uh, uh, to uh, to what we will need in the Fermat variety, let me let me. So the research algebraic, I actually I wrote algebraic uh, residue. Nah. So this is actually has to do with this this part. Remember that I reached to this uh, this uh, to something like this. Okay. 
and at the end of the day this must give me uh, uh, I have to take the residue of this guy so I want to explain residue in f equal to zero of this guy again up to some 2 pi i factor it is just eta bit so let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, write the fundamental property of the residue so let's say this is f equal to 0 uh, let's say my cycle here h n f equal to 0 i use this map in uh, gaussian isomorphism uh, so this will be sigma delta zig so to each point of delta a delta i add a circle so this will be in h n plus 1 up H n plus one, T n plus one, maybe. The sigma delta will be an H n plus one, T n plus one minus F equal to zero. Okay. So what is the fundamental uh, equality of the residue which defines it uniquely? So residue of, let's say, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, df, or maybe df wedge eta beta f sigma delta this must be uh, what up to gain uh, some 2 pi i factors that I don't care. It must be uh, what residue uh, of, uh, uh, let's say, this guy. Integrated over our, our delta. So anyway, this, uh, this equality defines... Uh, Uh, this uh, equality defines the residue map uh, uh, in a unique way. And uh, so it turns out that this is, uh, uh, so you can compute this one. Maybe you write this one as uh, df divided by the f wedge eta beta. And something also that you can do it. Uh, 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 maybe we'll, maybe okay. I mean, maybe and I make another picture. For example, if you have your delta, you take a transversal section at around each uh, around each point of uh, when you make the circle. Then uh, then uh, it, it it will uh, it will turn out that this is just the integration of eta beta. Uh, of delta, maybe let's write the 2 pi i factor. This is uh, 2 pi i uh, of, uh, of this guy. So this means that at the end, the residue will be just this uh, uh, eta beta. So this is just the generalization of the, the, the classical residue in complex analysis to this, uh, this higher dimension. And because of the format that we had, polar order one and differential form between df divided by f, and uh, then uh, 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 wedge eta beta, then uh, we can uh, compute this, this uh, residue map. Okay, so maybe let's, let's so, so if you have not followed the, the course so far, maybe you just forget everything. What I will need to play with Fermat varieties is going to be this one. Maybe I, I will write the summary of what I need in the case of uh, for some reason maybe good to keep these parameters s but for uh, we can put s equal to minus one to get the classical fermi variety or and so on. anyway what I need uh, h So let's uh, let's call this one uh, L L 
I'll actually let this, this, this is F. F equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to write the summary of what I need for the Durham cohomology of, uh, of uh, actually, so we are interested in the compact one. So this will be in X, this is the compactification. So this is given by the homogenization of small f. So, uh, um, H, uh, H and the ROM L is freely generated by eta beta which are x beta so first of all we know we know uh, we know the basis uh, of uh, of this this guy and uh, and what else uh, this is uh, one uh, the second uh, eta beta with a beta eta uh, beta uh, oh sorry eta beta with a beta not integers uh, they are they generate actually the image of H and the RAM X H and the RAM L. <coughs> so anyway, we want to capture the Hodge theory of X because uh, something like Hodge conjecture and so on is for compact varieties. So. Uh, but uh, we will work our affine variety. So the image of the elements of the Durham cohomology of X by this uh, restriction, uh, uh, we know that they correspond to A beta not integer. Uh, today I talked about this one. And, this, and, uh, and most importantly, the image, the image of so let's go to the Hodge filtration. F i H n theorem X this one is generated by so it was uh, eta beta and a beta less strictly less than k and uh, so in this case, uh, there is a, there is a, there is a, uh, 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 we just write n plus one minus i. Let me say, n. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so uh, this means that at the end of the image of the halt frustration here, also we have a, we have a, we have a control, and. Yeah, that's uh, that's all we need for uh, for a little bit to understand the the the, the Hodge conjecture for Fermi variety, because for the for the understanding of the Hodge conjecture we have uh, well, well for the computational understanding of the Hodge conjecture we need a basis of the Durham cohomology or generators. Here we have the generators, and also which uh, generators correspond to the Hodge filtration we have also uh, here. And okay, so let me let me uh, this time for sure. Next time uh, I will show you computer codes. All these things are implemented for examples of uh, of uh, homogeneous polynomials. Maybe one example I will focus this the case of K three surface. And uh, and then uh, then we will go to the chapter two chapters of Fermat variety and uh, and uh, to do some computations there okay uh, i think for today enough